Hey, this is Stacy, and I want to review your golf course utility plan and just the easy way you're going to find you'll be able to put these things together yourself. And so when we talk about the utility plan, it's just all of the straight runs and the angles associated with dropping the water lines, the sewer lines, and, you know, whatever is going to be there. So you want to think of, and this is what we did, all of the straight runs and segments, all of the angles, you want to count those. And then you always want to read whatever they're telling you here and make sure that's part of your material or your takeoff list. And then all the connections to the buildings, that's an additional price. And so when we go through the cost book, we'll be able to pretty much precisely uh, determine all of the material costs. And when we get those material costs, of course, we'll be able to determine all of the labor, uh, the time it takes. And so first thing is, is the easy thing. So we measured all the straight runs and then you want to go over. Now you have to be concerned with all of your trenching and your embedding and your backfill numbers. Okay. And so you want to look at your details and which is exactly what we did. Let's find the details. There are some. And so you're going to look at some of the details to figure out, you know, the length, width, height of your underground utilities, because you're going to have to determine how many cubic yards of uh, dirt you're going to have to cut in order to put that in underground. So that's one thing you always want to look at. So all of your underground utilities. And then we want to look for, that must be up here all of our bedding material and try to determine all of the numbers for all of the bedding. Go through it again. Those got those details, that those details and then here for all of your all of your pipe runs and so when you look at this this is typical on any set of plans because the bedding depends on and where it says vary because yeah you have a two inch pipe eight inch pipe 12 inch pipe and so your bedding, which is what is showing us here, okay, it's any combination of, so we always want to, for our trench backfill, we need three dimensions. We need the width, we need the depth, and then the length. And the length is always going to be the length of the pipe, and you can add 10% or whatever. And so it's typical that we are given, or always give rule of thumb, a foot on either, either side of the pipe as far as the you know the width you know but it tells you here so all you have to do is determine those dimensions from a b and c given here and all of our pipes are less than 20 inch in diameter and so we'll use the a is 6 b is 12 c is 9 to determine the again the three dimensions the width the depth and then the length is always the length of the pipe so that's going to give you cubic yards squared, or cubic yards. I mean, I'm sorry, let me correct myself. That'll give you cubic feet. So you got to turn everything into feet. Even if it's inches, you got to turn it into feet. So the width, the depth, and the length of the pipe, that's cubic feet. Divide that number by nine, and then you'll have the amount of cubic yards. And so you need to determine how many cubic yards of embedding material, good, co good cost book. It's going to give you the dimensions of the trenching. So you'll be able to pick, you know, your trenching dimensions and it'll give you a price from our good cost book. But as far as the embed material, we have to go through and depending on each different type of pipe, it's going to give you a different cubic yard number for the embed material because all the pipes are a different size or you can just eyeball it but we don't do that here we make sure you know how to do it in the most precise technical way 
So that was, that was uh, sand and then the backfill, which was taken, we say, from the cut material. And then miscellaneous costs are always connecting to the building, all of the angles, the whys. And then you always want to add for moving the equipment in and out. And I just give it a number and the professional can determine, you know, what, what that is. I'm not sure why we have water or dewatering. Why that's there, I don't know. It's not important. And then supervisor costs. You want to put the, something on there. We put the full full time of the project. So, step one, easy. Take your measurements, take your counts. Step two, you don't see here, we use a cost book. That leads us to step three. We have our quantity from the takeoff, cost from the cost book. The cost book will give us material cost and the labor unit, so how long it takes to do one unit, so times 70, it takes that long, and then we produce a very professional, nice looking estimate. So we teach everything here, and during the month of March, we're going through a Spring Hill Suites from top to bottom, and so make sure you join us and review every scope of work there. We'll be doing a utility complete set of the civil set there as well. Have any questions? Email me at education at sfjohnsonconsulting.com.